What's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? Welcome back to episode number three. I'm Eric Ramirez. I'm Rigoberto Madrigal. And today we're going to cover offline versus online. Honestly, I don't really know the difference. So he's definitely going to be a teacher today. I'm the student. So what's the difference, brother, between offline versus online? Perfect question. And any filmmaker coming out of college probably won't know the, the difference, to be honest. Yeah. This is a great episode to explain what is the difference between when you start an edit as opposed to when you finish an edit. I'm going to jump into some definitions that I sort of like as far as like explaining cool. what it is. And then I'm just going to try to give you some examples. Fair enough. Offline. Offline editing is the actual rough or draft cut of the project by editing low quality footage together. Usually it entails editing ProRes proxies to create a locked cut. Online editing is a final cut of the project by editing the high quality footage together. Online editors would reconstruct the offline edit. The offline editing is usually the start of any, yeah, of <laughs> any work that you're gonna do. So usually what happens is you shoot your music video, you shoot your TV series, you shoot your, your film. Let's say you're using a red camera, yeah. hypothetically at this point. You're copying all your media to drives. So now it's done. Now we're going to send it to the editor. You have five drives with red, high res, red media in there. Normally, depending on your computer power, mm -hmm. you can work off those drives. But that isn't always the case, especially when you're starting to work with Premiere, Avid, Final Cut, you tend to create ProRes proxies of all those files. You as the editor could handle the edit with the director, with the cinematographer. It's just a faster way of working. Yeah. Okay. 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 Got it. Got it. Got it. So that's usually the offline process. You get your media, you transcode it and you bring it into your editing software, your editing computer. You locked your cut with your director. Yeah. Once you lock it, then obviously you have to send it to color. Uh, you have to send it for final mix. So there's a couple of like steps that you have to do once you lock a cut. Then once you color it, you get all that media back and you rebuild your edit with all the color media. So mm. that usually entails online. But what you're doing with online is you're using already the high res media. You're using like the actual raw media that they shot with. Okay. You know, so an online editor will usually rebuild with the high res stuff. They'll mm. rebuild the edit with the R3Ds. They'll get all the VFX elements. We'll drop them wherever they need to go. Okay. They'll put the credits. They'll put the titles. They'll put the final mix, uh, any animation stuff that goes in there. Yeah. So your online editor is technically finishing your lock cut. Okay. That's the way you should think about it. One's at the very start and one's at the very end. Mm. And your online editor is finishing for delivery. So meaning it's going to go from that point, it's going to go to network. It's going to go to festivals or theaters at that point. Overseas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the way to think about it. Usually your offline is your very intro, like your very start mm -hmm. of your editing process. Okay. And your online is always finishing and finishing with the high res stuff. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Do you always need to be to be working with ProRes proxies? That's a good question. Yeah. Because now we have software like DaVinci that sort of uh, gives us an edge. Yeah, yeah. As, as opposed to editing in Premiere and then having to go to a coloring software and then having to rebuild your, your edit again in Premiere. Definitely. You can start your editing in DaVinci with all your high res footage in there already, pretty much do its version of its proxies ah. through optimizing the media and creating a, a render cache of it. Okay. But the great thing is that you're not going to have to circle around to another mm. software. You're just going to stick to one software. And once you do that, once you optimize your media, you can technically edit pretty fast too. You know, you yeah. can slip, slide, whatever the director needs. And you can lock your cut. Once you lock your cut, you can color it in the same software. You can finish it in the same software and deliver from the same software. 
Yeah, so it's not going to three or four different softwares yeah, yeah, yeah. before you get to online. And that's usually what happens when you're mm-hmm. when you're doing offline. You usually start with Premiere, Avid, Final Cut, and then you have to send it to a coloring software like DaVinci. Mm-hmm. Then DaVinci has to kick out pretty much all the color files back to either the editor or who's got, whoever it is going to be the online editor. Okay. And the, that online editor has to rebuild everything with those final files. Mm. So, uh, you know, you're having to go one, two, three, maybe three softwares, as opposed to if you stick to DaVinci, you can probably edit your offline in there, you know, lock it, mm-hmm. color it, and then do all the finishing. So it's, it's a great way of sort of minimizing how much uh, how much stuff you're sending out cool brother well I appreciate you know you sharing all that information with us and myself too Uh, I learned a lot I didn't know it to that extent but I'm sure you guys got a lot of juicy information out of this and what are we gonna cover on our next episode Uh, I think on our next episode we're gonna cover the edit tab it's a lot of information so I wanted to skip it and kind of give you an overview of offline editing and online editing as a way also to make you think about starting your whole edit in DaVinci. For sure. As opposed to like, hey, should I start in Premiere? Yeah. And what it's gonna it's what it's gonna take for you to color your media and then rebuild it as well. Awesome. Well, that was a great episode, at least from my opinion. I'm sure you guys if you guys think that was a great episode, please smash that like button. And if you have any comments or questions or suggestions, please write them down below. And we'll catch you guys next time. Peace.